Yes, thank you, Lara. Let me just uh, share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, thank you. So, uh, yeah, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this webinar also from my side. Um, as Lara said, I will tell you a story about um, essentially how we can make sense of the many challenges that we face today. And uh, climate change is obviously part of the story, but uh, I want to show and emphasize that we cannot look at climate change or in any way solve climate change without also looking at the bigger picture. Okay, so this is giving you the very doom and gloom side of things, but um, it's no secret that our world today faces many problems, including, for example, biodiversity loss, conflicts and wars and deforestation. Um, on the image on the right, we can see that we are crossing many of our Earth boundaries that allow us to safely and sustainably live on uh, our planet. And we also fall short in ensuring a good an equitable social foundation, meaning to provide food, water, and healthcare, healthcare and education to all. Um, the drivers and causes of our, of our global challenges are deeply rooted in our societies. And this includes how we extract resources, how we produce and consume energy, food and clothes, and how we travel. And this, of course, also holds true to climate change. So scientists agree that climate change is 100% due to us humans and the emissions we emit into the atmosphere. Um, and I want to invite you to guess uh, which city is shown in the background here. Um, the picture demonstrates the tons of carbon dioxide that New York City added to the atmosphere in 2010. It was 54 million metric tons. Um, and some examples of human activities generating emissions and thus causing climate change are the increased use of fossil fuels such as coal, oil and gas to generate electricity and heat, to run uh, cars and other forms of transport, and to um, power uh, manufacturing and our industry. Uh, another cause is deforestation because living trees absorb and store carbon dioxide and also farm, farming releases uh, huge levels of emissions into the atmosphere. And these examples also make clear that the human drivers of climate change are also often very similar to driving uh, all the other sustainability challenges we saw on the previous slide. Um, now, but climate change also adds to this mix of other existing problems and amplifies them like biodiversity loss and pollution. And today, uh, we especially focus on social justice and climate change. Um, while the impacts of climate change will be felt by each and every one of us, climate change will not affect all of us equally. And especially those with the least access to resources will face a much higher burden from climate change while generally having contributed much less to it um, amongst others because they consume and travel less. Um, so for example, climate change causes droughts and flood risks, which decrease agricultural productivity. And this means lost income, uh, food prices will rise and uh, also food availability will become less predictable, uh, increasing the risk of famines and malnutrition. People will also lose their homes due to floods. And especially lower income people already live in flood prone areas. And some areas like islands in the Pacific uh, will just disappear. Um, conflicts over resources and land will increase. And this will lead to displacement and climate migration. So the picture on the back here shows a miniature migrant camp that was set up by Oxfam already in 2009 um, to remind the European Union that many millions of people have already been displaced as a result of climate stresses and projection, projections foresee many millions of climate migrants uh, over the coming decades. So summing up this doom and gloom part of the story, our world is unsustainable because of us and climate change amplifies existing problems, including injustice. And this is where we call for a transition out of climate change. We need to radically change 
for example, infrastructures, behaviors, and lifestyles to address climate change and to contribute to a sustainable and just world. So how can we understand transitions? Um, remember that so sustainability problems are deeply rooted in our societies. And this means that we cannot solve these problems without addressing also the underlying drivers of them. There are just no quick fixes. In a nutshell, transitions are long-term processes of fundamental change um, in the underlying culture, structures, and practices of society. So cultures include how we talk, talk and think about and value things. For example, do we want to continue eating processed food farmed somewhere far away in greenhouses and transported all over the world? Structures mean that we change our policies and regulations to, for example, give everyone a carbon budget uh, and to ensure that companies cannot make profit from exploiting nature and people. Structures also include um, physical infrastructures that need to become long lasting and sustainable. Um, and finally, practices refer to our daily life, our daily lifestyles and routines. So for example, um, whether we take the bike or public transport or the car to move around. But more specifically, we talk about sustainability transitions. And this means that we take sustainability as an end goal for our future human development. Um, sustainability essentially means that environmental, social and economic goals are addressed in synergy. Um, so for example, economic growth cannot be the only goal for our societies and needs to be linked to justice and nature protection. And then looking from this uh, long-term end goal, we can then ask which changes in our culture, structures and practices need to happen to move from our current state of unsustainability problems to sustainability. So for example, we can zoom in on the energy system and look into the transition that needs to happen towards a more sustainable energy system. This involves, for example, a shift from fossil fuel-based energy sources towards renewables to reduce emissions and pollution. But besides only requiring changes in technologies, um, this also requires changes in behaviors and consumption practices. So for example, people can become so-called prosumers, they produce and consume their own energy in a decentralized way, also taking away power from big energy companies. Um, and people also need to um, reduce the energy consumption overall and uh, make it more flexible. So when then specifically talking about transitions out of climate change, it means that climate action, including mitigation action to reduce emissions and adaptation actions to prepare and cope with the impacts of climate change can and should create opportunities to contribute to sustainability transitions. And that is very important in view of social justice. Um, the transition perspective on climate change makes clear that we cannot fight climate change without considering other sustainability challenges and in particular so social justice. Um, for example, also measures even to adapt to climate change can have negative and unequal consequences on people. Um, now this picture shows the High Line in New York City. Um, the High Line is an old train track that uh, has been transformed into an urban park. And in principle, it's a good measure because uh, green space offers a lot of benefits, including protection from floods. Um, it provides shared community space and um, uh, uh, helps to protect biodiversity and it also increases mental health and well-being. But the High Line also contributed to the gentrification of the neighborhood uh, and made housing unaffordable for many of the former residents who as a result were forced to move away and out of the city center. And besides lower income people often live already in neighborhood, neighborhoods that have much less access to uh, green space. Um, so I want to close with a view on how we can steer such transitions out of climate change and to sustainability and justice. Um, overall, transitions are complex and highly uncertain processes, and there's just not one silver bullet solution. 
Um, and this means that we cannot command and control transitions or manage them in a top-down way. And they're also not in the hands of just one actor like the government, but it's actually in the hands of all of us um, who need to take actions um, to implement the changes. Um, there are growing examples that climate change and justice can be addressed together. Um, an example is, um, for example, the uh, European Union support to coal regions. Um, the aim is to help 42 regions across 12 European countries to transition to a low carbon economy. Um, but this also means that a lot of people might lose their jobs. So the platform offers tailored assistance and also supports retraining for green jobs. Uh, another example is that in Indonesia, <clears throat> the president removed uh, transport fuel subsidies with the promise of better alternatives to promote development rather than cheap fuel. And the subsidies were then replaced with investments in infrastructure and poverty reduction programs. And most of these initiatives taken to ensure equitable and just transition have um, some common ingredients. Um, that also relate to how transitions can be steered. Uh, one is the participation of affected workers and communities in planning and advancing climate action. Um, the other one is anticipation of negative impacts also for different groups of peoples and especially for uh, vulnerable uh, people through long-term planning and impact assessments. And um, finally support programs for uh, that include financing and also capacity uh, building, um, for example, uh, retraining for new jobs. Thank you, that's it. Uh